Hello, this is Billy Corr from the Carolina Circle Mile Wiki. Tonight is Wednesday, May the 4th of 2016. And the subject of this video does not involve this, um, this uh, saw that was manufactured expressly for J.C. Penney by Skill. Obviously, my dad must have been working on it a while ago. So we'll move that out of the way. And doesn't involve this Craftsman um, tape measure either. Good tape measure, by the way. We've had it for a, a very, very long time. <laughs> but um, the subject of this video is something that um, a lot of you um, probably um, can relate to quite a bit. Um, keyboards. Let's talk about keyboards tonight. Um, keyboards. They type. They sometimes make noise. They input. And just for clarification, the keyboards we are referencing tonight are not piano keyboards. <laughs> no, um, these are computer keyboards and um, And tonight, in particular, we're going to be discussing a keyboard a lot of you may be familiar with. A little keyboard known as the IBM Model M. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the uh, Model M um, is considered to be, by quite a few people, um, to be the greatest um, computer keyboard ever manufactured. They started making them, and I believe... 1984, sometime in the mid-1980s, um, and um, they manufactured them for many, many years um, until um, IBM sold the uh, manufacturing rights of um, for the uh, Model M to Lexmark, who um, started making them around the mid-90s or so. Um, they were still branded IBM, but they were manufactured by um, Lexmark instead, but they were pretty much essentially the exact same thing. And um, as a matter of fact, um, if you want a modern day Model M keyboard, you'll want to go check out the Unicomp keyboards. Those are very nice keyboards. Um, they're, they pretty much use the exact same type of hardware that the Model M used, and it feels just the same except newer. As a matter of fact, I use one of those keyboards on my um, main computer in my bedroom. It's a um, USB version of it, obviously, but um, it works perfectly and I love it. But um, enough on the um, Unicomps. Let's discuss a particular Model M. And, this, and it's this one right here. I picked this up at Value Village um, last week for only $3. That's right, folks. A Model M keyboard for $3. All I had to do to it is just clean it up a little bit, but um, it doesn't look perfect, but I think it looks pretty good. And um, let's go ahead and get the cord undone from here. Now, I mentioned... Um, Later on in the life of uh, Model M keyboards, um, these were manufactured um, for IBM by Lexmark. Well, this is one example of such a uh, Model M. Um, let's get the camera off the tripod and take a closer look at it. Oh, yeah. I love these keyboards. Oh, yeah. And let me show you um, what makes these keyboards so wonderful. Not only is it a mechanical keyboard, which in itself is pretty much makes it a great keyboard to type on, but um, let me see if I can get it positioned properly so we can um, so this will come out right. This uses buckling springs. Um, YouTube user um, IBM ThinkPad R51, um, also known as Jack Stavros, um, uploaded a video a couple of weeks ago on about a um, a 
pretty unique variation of the uh, Model M keyboard where it, not only was it black, which incidentally the Unicomps are black as well, but it actually has an IBM ThinkPad style um, track point mouse in between the these keys right here along with little um, left click and right click buttons. Um, but I digress. Um, you'll want to check out his video because um, he explains the um, technology behind the buckling springs better than I could. Um, so watch him instead of listening to me babble like an idiot. <laughs> but anyway, this is what it sounds like when you type on a Model M. Okay, just each individual key now. Alright, one more time for clarification. Uh, let's see. Uh... So yes, um, while it is a very loud um, keyboard when you type on it, um, the tactileness of it is just um, astonishing. It's very comfortable and and I know I keep saying this, it's just perfect to type on. Um, and I absolutely love it. Oh yes, oh yes. Another cool but pointless feature to it, well, pointless for um, simpletons like me, some of the keycaps on here, um, let's just take the control key for instance, the keycaps, um, you can actually pull them off. Yeah, check that out. And you can see the um, actual uh, key itself. You just put the key cap back on. Matter of fact, um, do this without breaking it. Um, there's the um, actual buckling spring. want to mess with that too much. I don't want to break it. Um, I was lucky enough as it is to get this keyboard, so I need to, need to guard it with my life. Okay, now let's just go back on. Uh... Okay, was... There we go. Alright, we're we got a working keyboard. Well, as far as I know, um, believe it or not, I've had this for about a week and a half now, but I have not hooked it up to a computer yet, because I haven't figured out where, what to use it on yet, but I have tonight, so we'll um, be doing that momentarily, but yeah, let's just take another look at it. Um, now, as I said, um, this is a Model M that was manufactured by Lexmark. This is one of the later ones. In fact, um, we'll flip it over. These keyboards are very heavy, by the way. Um, they could double as a weapon of mass destruction. Okay, you can see where it says manufactured for IBM by Lexmark. Um, copyright 1984. That's when they first started making these. Although this particular one was manufactured on October the 5th of 1993. And um, some early versions of the um, Model M keyboards that IBM made in the 80s um, actually had a built-in speaker right here. These obviously do not, but you can still see the, um, the um, spot for it right there. And um, another interesting thing about this keyboard, um, on the um, Model M's that IBM manufactured, um, the keyboard cable could be detached from um, the keyboard itself right here. However, on the um, ones made by Lexmark, like this one, it's permanently hardwired in. So, yeah. Won't be removing any um, keyboard cable from this one unless um, I get abnormally angry <laughs> and decide to go um, medieval on it. But these are nice keyboards. I ain't going to do that. And by the way, this is the... Um, 
PS2 version of it, so um, we can hook it up to a lot of modern systems. Um, you want to be careful though when you're hooking this up to um, a, a, a PS2 to USB adapter because a lot of times they don't play nicely with these. I haven't tried that before, but um, I've just heard from very reliable sources that can sometimes be a no-no. Okay, so let's go hook it up to a computer and test it out. Okay, um, this is the Packard Bell Legend 1510 Supreme. One of my favorite computers in the entire world. Had it for 11 years now, if you can believe that. Um, and it's such a nice computer that I think it's worthy of an IBM Model M keyboard. Isn't that nice? By the way, um, last time we saw this computer, we actually installed the Microsoft um, Home Mouse on here. So if you want to go check that out, just go back a couple of months on my videos and you can um, join me in the festivities for that. Okay, we got to unhook this, um, Packard, this Packard Bell branded keyboard, which by the way, in themselves are actually really nice keyboards. A lot of times, um, I've actually plugged these up to more modern computers and used them as my main keyboard because they are just really, really nice. They're very, they're still pretty tactile. They're not as good as a as a Model M, but I'm close to saying that they, for retro computing, it's almost the next best thing. So we will move that out of the way. That's actually the keyboard that originally came with this 1510 Supreme. So, um, I feel, feel kind of bad taking that away from it, but um, it'll be worth it. Okay. Let's see if we can squeeze it in here. Because, um, if you haven't figured it out by now, Model M keyboards are not known for their, um, for being small. <laughs> Alright, might be a good spot for it. Um, now let's uh, plug it in to the computer. Get the cord untangled first. These, um, a lot of these Model M keyboards, by the way, the cables on them are very, very long. So, yeah. Okay, I gotta figure out which one's the keyboard connector. Okay, it's this one right here. Get it caught on the power plugs there. That wouldn't be good. Alright, there we go. And I just unplugged the speakers. Way to go, way to go. Okay, let me just take care of the speaker here that I mutilated. Come on. Oh, and see that all right? Yeah, that's good enough. Let's fire the Packard Bell up and hope that this keyboard works. Like I said, I've had it for a, over a week now and I haven't had a chance to test it yet. So we'll find out here on camera if we've got a working Model M. See where I'm found. Didn't see anything on there about the keyboard, but I may have just missed that. <laughs> maybe it, and maybe it's not supposed to say that anyway. I'm now just talking out of my nose, whatever that means. All right. Moment of truth here. Let's uh, let's um, open up Microsoft Word. This is Word for Windows 95. Okay. And I need to adjust the date for daylight savings time. There we go. Alright, um, let's set it up to a font size that you 
folks can have a chance at seeing. All right, folks, moment of truth. Um, does look promising because I do see the numlock key, um, the, I mean the numlock light going on. So, let's see what happens. And we have some keys that don't work. Oh my gosh, we have a broken keyboard, guys. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, this is a heartbreaker. Yeah. Let me do some troubleshooting and I'll be right back. Well folks, this is the end of the video actually and it's not a happy ending. Um, I found the problem. Um, on the left you're seeing the PS2 connector from the Packard Bell keyboard and on the right you're seeing the PS2 connector for the um, Model M keyboard and the Packard Bell connector has one, two, three, four, five, six um, pins in there. The Model M one has one, two, three, four. Yes, this... This PS2 connector is missing pins. And there's nothing I can do about that, folks. Um, hate to say this, but... Um, this Model M keyboard is a lost cause. And you know what really breaks my heart is that um, this is actually my second Model M keyboard. First one I bought back in 2012 at a thrift store for $2. And I used it for several years until I decided to um, clean it and leave it on the dashboard of my car to dry. And it wound up melting the plastic on it to where I couldn't use it anymore. And so when I found this at Value Village a couple of weeks ago for such a good price, I was so excited because I would finally own a working Model M keyboard again. Well, I guess I still don't, folks. Um, I guess if I want a Model M keyboard, I'm going to have to get on eBay and pay $100 for one. It's my only option here, folks. I'm sorry for the sudden, not-so-happy ending, but that's just how it went, folks. So, rest in peace, Model M. Billy Core signing off. And no, I can't fix it because I don't know how to solder.